Hello everybody and welcome to F1 Sasha presents the F1 Files. A look back in the history of Formula One for 365 days. What happened on this day back in time? So today the 7th of May and here are some of the events that happened. Tony Marsh unfortunately passed away 11 years ago. 14 years ago we had the 2006 European Grand Prix. We're going to look at that Grand Prix as well. At that Grand Prix, the 2006 European Grand Prix, Ralf Schumacher started his 150th race. Frank Montagni started his first race in Formula One. Alonso got his 10th pole position. And Felipe Massa got his uh, first pole position, uh, first podium place at the 2006 European Grand Prix. It was also on this day in 2000 that we had the Spanish Grand Prix. And we're going to look back at that one as well. That, of course, is 20 years ago. On that day, McLaren won their 125th race. Back on this day, 1989, we had the Monaco Grand Prix. At the Monaco Grand Prix, 31 years ago, Pierre-Henri Rapanel started his first ever race. And Stefano Modena, that's a name I haven't heard for a long time, um, managed to get his first ever podium place in Formula One. 1978, the Monaco Grand Prix took place on this day as well. Patrick Depalier won his first race at that. 1967, we had the Monaco Grand Prix as well, and that was won by Denny Hume. And Denny Hume, I was doing some e-racing the other day, um, actually unfortunately lost his life, which was something I found out, at Bathurst, going down the long back straight, um, suffering from a heart attack. How bizarre is that? In the 1967 uh, Grand Prix uh, in Monaco as well, it was Jack Brabham's 10th pole position, and Chris Amon was his first ever um, podium place at the 1967 Monaco Grand Prix. So it's amazing how many different things happen in the world of Formula One on a specific day. So let's look back at two races that happened on the 7th of May in Formula One history. The first one we're going to look at was round five of the championship in 2006. That was the European Grand Prix. It took place at the classic Nürburgring circuit. Fernando Alonso was in pole position, managed to hold it, but Ferrari just uh, got a little bit better when it came to the pit stops and uh, overtook uh, Fernando Alonso. Raikkonen even led the race for a couple of laps as well. It wasn't the most exciting race. It was the second win of uh, the season for Michael Schumacher and all of a sudden he crept a little bit closer to Fernando Alonso. Of course, Fernando Alonso was the 2005 world champion and there was this great fight between Alonso and Schumacher in 2006 as well. It was also the race where Felipe Massa achieved his first ever podium place, finished in third place as well. Frank Montagni made his uh, official Formula One debut, becoming the first French driver since Olivia Panis at the 2004 Japanese Grand Prix. There was one interesting part about the weekend um, and that was in qualifying. Uh, all of a sudden there was a timing issue problem and the last three and a half minutes basically were stopped because the timing system went a little bit crazy and uh, they had to restart uh, the the session and there were certain drivers in those days qualifying was was a little bit different to where it is uh, today and a couple of guys struggled uh, during that qualifying session it wasn't the most exciting race i must be honest in 2006 but michael schumacher won ahead of fernando alonso felipe massa mclaren mercedes uh, kimi raikkonen was fourth then rubens barrichello for honda was fifth Fisichello was sixth for Renault, uh, Nico Rosberg for Williams was seventh, Jacques Villeneuve for BMW Sauber was eighth, Jarno Trulli for Toyota was ninth, and Nick Heidfeld wrapped out um, the top ten in his BMW Sauber. But also on the 7th of May was the 2000 Spanish Grand Prix at the Circuit de Catalunya. Now we all know the Circuit de Catalunya extremely well and even back in 2020 years ago it was still a track that was used extensively for testing as it is done today. We know that it's a difficult uh, track to overtake on but it does spring up some great great racing and technically a wonderful, wonderful circuit to, to drive on. So 2000 season was a, a really, really fascinating and, and brilliant season because 
Don't forget, in 1988, uh, 1998 and 1999, Mika Hakkinen dominated together with David Coulthard and McLaren Mercedes with uh, the magnificently designed uh, car, but also they had Michelin rubber. And in 1999, everyone expected Michael Schumacher to come out you know, with the Ferrari and take on the, the might of uh, Mika Hakkinen. As much as he tried, he unfortunately went and broke his leg at the Silverstone Grand Prix that year and was out for about four or five races. When he returned, of course, he was very, very strong. And Eddie Irvine nearly won the World Championship. How bizarre would that have been in 1999? But Mika Hakkinen won it and made him a two times double world champion 1998 and 1999. 2000, massive expectation on Ferrari. Don't forget, Schumacher had been there from 96, 97, 98, 99. He was going into his fifth season with Ferrari and still they hadn't won a championship. So this was all about uh, the 2000 championship and they went to Spain. In 1999, uh, McLaren had dominated uh, the Spanish Grand Prix and won it quite easily. But all of a sudden, 2000 and Ferrari were looking very, very sharp. Michael Schumacher went out and got pole position ahead of Hakkinen, and then it was Barrichello, and then it was Coulthard, and then it was Ralph Schumacher in the Williams. So the, the top four in 2000 were very much the two Ferraris and the two McLarens. Thereafterwards, it was Williams and, and the rest. And the gap between the, the, um, the four top protagonists at the front and fifth place was usually around about a second, a second and a half. So just showing you how, how, how much stronger McLaren and Ferrari were in 2000 than uh, the rest of the field. So Schumacher got a pretty decent start, not great. Hakkinen also didn't get a great start either. But going into turn one, Hakkinen was on the outside, had to leave some space and let Schumacher uh, uh, through and, and go on to lead the race. But Ralph Schumacher had a brilliant start and he pushed up into third place. Coulthard got ahead of, uh, well, Coulthard stayed ahead of Barry Kello and um, uh, Barry Keller was demoted now to fifth place at the start of the race. Michael Schumacher eased a little bit of a gap ahead of uh, Mika Hakkinen into about three and a half seconds. First uh, pit stops came along, Schumacher went in, and this was uh, quite an amazing uh, incident. And who would have known that years later we would have found out a lot more about the sordid details of Nigel Stepney. But at the 2000 Grand Prix, Michael Schumacher went in for his first pit stop and um, was ready in those days you had the lollipop man who used to lift up and then you would go and Nigel Stepney was the chief mechanic lollipop man and gave the go ahead a little bit too early for Michael Schumacher the fuel hose was still attached to the Ferrari Schumacher went out ripped off the the fuel hose and unfortunately took off um, rode over Nigel Stepney and broke his ankle but he still managed to go out and be pretty quick. Schumacher, uh, Mika Hakkinen came in three, sec uh, three laps later, had a pretty decent pit stop, but still came out behind Michael Schumacher. And the two of these drivers, Schumacher and, and Hakkinen, were about 10 or 12 seconds ahead of the field and carried on that way. In the second round of pit stops, however, things went awry again for Ferrari. And all of a sudden, now they had a problem with the fuel nozzle on Michael Schumacher's car, which could well have been uh, caused by his first uh, pit stop. He was stationary for about 17 and a half seconds, and that put pay to, um, to, to his sort of title, well, race win fight with Mika Hakkinen. Hakkinen was now comfortably in the lead. Schumacher was in second. He had Coulthard in third and Barry Kello in fourth. And all of a sudden, Michael Schumacher started slowing terribly. Um, and it was defending against uh, David Coulthard, defending against uh, Ralph Schumacher, and he was defending so much against uh, David Coulthard that Barry Kello went around the outside and uh, passed both of them, which was uh, quite quite uh, cool to see. So Schumacher all of a sudden had this, um, this uh, massive problem and eventually went into the uh, pits again um, to get another set of uh, tires. It was subsequently found out that Michael Schumacher's second set of tires, why he was so slow, had a very, one of the tires had a very, very slow leak and was creating a terrible understeer for him. Schumacher went in for another set of tires, came out, but stayed in fifth position. So it was a great victory for uh, Mika Hakkinen 
And well, this is, yeah, the 1999 car, but that's basically quite similar to what uh, he won in, uh, or used uh, when he won that, uh, that race. He, um, there were only two leaders in that race, Schumacher for 38 laps and then Mika Hakkinen for 27 laps. And can you believe it? There were only three overtakes during the whole course of that race. Yeah, scary. So Formula One doesn't change. As much as everyone thinks it changes, it doesn't, it stays the same. Here was also Michael Schumacher's car from the, uh, this was his 2001 car. Um, I don't have his 2006 car. And for, well, I, I, I'll have to have a look around, but um, uh, when Michael Schumacher won in Germany, uh, also winning in front of his home uh, fans back in 2006. So two quite contrasting races that took place on this day in, in, uh, on the 7th of May back in history. The 2006 race, which wasn't spectacularly exciting, and the 2000 Spanish Grand Prix, where even though there were only three overtakes, it actually was a very, very exciting uh, Grand Prix and a great victory for uh, Mika Hakkinen. And that also gave him uh, a couple of points closer to uh, Michael Schumacher. And as we know, the 2000 season came down to an unbelievable end as well. So that's a look at the 7th of May. Tomorrow, the 8th of May. I'm not going to give too much away, but it, uh, yeah. It's a day I will never, ever forget. And if you don't remember why, make sure you tune in tomorrow and make sure you subscribe as well. Tell your friends, we're having a look at the F1 Sasha Presents, the F1 Files. Until tomorrow, ciao, ciao. Follow us 